Hello, welcome to this short tutorial on how to create these Japanese diamonds. So as you can see in the necklace I've used four of these beautiful diamonds to create this lovely pattern in the middle and on the earrings I've just used one diamond each and then adorned them with these absolutely stunning tourmalines that come in the kit. So within the kit you're going to get three different sizes of jump rings, you're going to get your three millimeter, four millimeter and five millimeter inner diameters. For the um, Japanese diamonds, I've used the three and the five millimeter jump rings. I have added a few head pins just to attach these gorgeous um, tourmalines to them. So let's get started. So to create these pieces, tool wise, you're going to need your um, chain nose and flat nose pliers, which is what we need for every um, chain mail piece really. As long as the jaws are flat on the inside and not round or conical then you'll be fine um, and no serrations on the inside so nice and smooth. Okay I tend to favour the bent nose pliers and the chisel nose pliers but it's entirely up to you which two pairs you choose, which pair you choose. So to get started what we're going to do is we're going to take two of our large five millimeter jump rings and we're going to attach 12 small 3mm inner diameter jump rings to that. So we're going to put all 12 on, the, on that jump ring. Now I'm using my demo jump rings so they do look rather large compared to obviously what comes in the kit. So you can see I've got all 12 on there and I'm just going to close that up. Now in the correct size, this does get a little bit tight to get them all on. So even if you have to put 10 on and then add two on later when we get the second one in. Right, all Japanese diamonds are based on a 12 in 2 pattern. So if I just bring one of the earrings back, you can see if I just zoom that in. There we go. So you can see that everything's doubled up. So the large jump rings are doubled up and the small jump rings are doubled up. Okay. This is the centre that we're working on to start with. So I'm going to start in the, in the centre and effectively make, if I just cover those two bits up to start with, we effectively make a flower to start with and then we turn that into a diamond. Okay, so going back to um, our large jump rings. So we've got one in the centre at the moment. Well, we need to put two. Okay, so we need to then double this centre jump ring up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I tend to go through half of them and then lay this flat. Now, rather than try to feed the large jump ring through, because that will end up with you crossing it over, what the best way to, to do is to feed the small jump rings onto the large jump ring. So that way, if they don't cross over and they sit side by side and they haven't mobius in the middle, okay? I'm just gonna close that one up and lay that down. So you can see now that we've got 12 small jump rings with two large jump rings. Okay. So next what we need is we need another 12 jump rings, small jump rings. Okay, we're going to add these on like petals around the flower. So for 12 small jump rings, we also need 12 large jump rings. So I'm going to take my first large jump ring and I'm going to attach on four small jump rings. Now only the first one we attach four small jump rings to. The rest of them from then on we only we attach two. So we need two of our small jump rings from the centre of our flower. Okay. So we've just got two jump rings there and we're going to take this large jump ring and we're going to go through just those two. So you can see this is the center of the flower. This is the jump ring with a four on. We've just used two jump rings from the center and we're going to close that up. Okay, so that's what we've got now. We're going to take our next large jump ring because don't forget, wherever, wherever we put a large jump ring, we're going to double it up because it's based on the 12 in two weave. So I'm going to go through all four of those small jump rings and then fold it down and through the two small jump rings that are on the center and close. 
So in effect now that's our first petal. Now the reason we put four on to start with is that we need two for the start of the weave or for the flower and two to finish the flower. So if I just organize that so that it sits as we want it to sit. Okay, so you can see now that we've got the center, our first petal and our four jump rings now split into two pairs. So next we need our next two jump rings, large jump rings for our next petal and our next two small jump rings to connect them together. So we're going to take our open jump ring, we're going to take the next two in sequence from the middle, from the center, we're going to attach it to the two, two of the jump rings that we had from the previous petal and before we close we're going to attach another two jump, small jump rings onto there. So in effect it's gone through six jump rings, it's got two of the loose ones, two from the center and two from the previous petal and close. And now again we're going to double that one up entirely up to you which ones you go for first you can sort of like go for the the two loose ones first and then go to the others as long as you connect them all so we've got them all there now and close so we've now got our next petal in sequence so you can see we're starting to move around so i'm going to take my next two large jump rings my next two small jump rings and again repeating the process Go for the next two small jump rings on the center circle. Go through the two of the previous petal that we've just added on. And before I close, add on my next two small jump rings and close. And then again, going through with my next large open jump ring and just following the same route through, connecting all three pairs together and close. So now we've got three petals. So now we need our next two large jump rings and our next two small jump rings. And again, through the two on the center, through the two on the previous petal. So you can see these petals are starting to attach together. Add on my two loose jump rings and close. And then again with the second jump ring, going through the same route or the same path that that last jump ring went in. So all the way around and close. Okay, so we've now got four small jump rings left on the center. We've got two more large jump rings, two more small jump rings. So again, I can go through the next two in the sequence, the next two, from the previous petal, add these two loose jump rings and close. And now I'm going to go through again the same path that that jump ring just went on, making sure that they don't cross over. Now if this does start to lock up on you and it gets really tight and unable to move, it could be that one of these large jump rings has crossed over somewhere. So just go back and just check your work and just make sure that you haven't crossed it over anywhere. Okay, so what we've got left now is we've got left two large jump rings. We haven't got any small jump rings left, but we've actually got them all in situ. So they're all in place. So we've got the two that we started with. When we first started this flower, we started with four. Two went to the one side and two went to the other and then we chased our way round till we get to this point so we've got all six jump rings in place so what we're going to do with our last two jump rings is just connect that together and again doubling that up and through and what we've got now is we've got a beautiful Japanese flower. So that is a, a gorgeous chainmail weave in its own right, but we wanted to turn this into a diamond. Okay, so to turn it into a diamond, we need another four small jump rings and another four large jump rings. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the small jump ring and we're just going to pick one pair and we're just going to add on two small jump rings. So there's one. And there's two. Okay, now choosing whichever side you want to go for, it doesn't really matter. Choose an adjacent jump ring 
and we're going to go through the same here and here. So what we've got now is we can then connect those four together and we can double that up. So we've got now the start of our diamond on one side. You'd replicate this onto the bottom with the other two. So you need another four small jump rings onto the opposite pair. So here and here, attach these two in and that's when you have your full Japanese diamond. So if I just bring this back in. Okay, so you can see there, you've got that beautiful diamond effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom right in on the camera. Oops, if I don't knock it off that is. There we go. So you can now see how that beautiful Byzantine diamond has been formed. I've just added, like I say, these three head pins with these absolutely beautiful um, tourmalines on there. But you can see your gorgeous diamond and then all you need to do is attach it by a shepherd's hook. I'm just going to bring over the necklace so you can see that as well. So again, this time I've added a tourmaline to each bottom unit of that bottom diamond. So I've got five on there. But you can add as many tourmalines as you want into that piece. So I hope you like this short tutorial. If you have any problems, just pop along to my guest designer page, which is JM Guest Designer Fleur Hastings, and ask me any questions about this weave or any problems that you're having, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Many thanks.